Hey y'all, it's a nice cloudy day today. I had something I wanted to show y'all. One of the things is these Tahitian melons, aren't they cool? This morning the bees are buzzing. And then look over here, got a bird's nest. Isn't that neat? I've noticed a female cardinal. I'm assuming that is a cardinal nest. That will be exciting to have little babies out here, huh? Man, those bees are just going crazy. You hear them? And these are just growing taller and taller. I need to get my measure out here and measure, see how tall they are. But I've been, what I've been doing with some of these, where is it? Yeah, I tried to kind of weave these through. I'm trying to see if I can get it to maybe come back down a little bit, you know? But I have to do it gently. Because I worry they're getting so tall that it, it, they're gonna need support up there, right? There's, I don't have any way of getting support up there for them, so. Especially when they start getting fruit, they're gonna start hanging down. And I did something silly last time, y'all. I forgot that squash and melons have a female flower and a male flower and I didn't make sure when I was covering up the flowers with tool last week that I was covering up a male and a female. So I went ahead and fixed that. Here, this is the female. It's just shorter, has a little flower on the end. And then the male has a longer stem, you see. Still waiting for those to pop open so I can pollinate them. And then my tool bags over here, the tomato flower has the male and female parts inside the flower. Last year I just tapped the bag and that was good enough to get them to pollinate and produce fruit. I didn't keep seeds from those last year. I was kind of just experimenting. We'll see how that works. I'm just kind of been tapping the bag. <laughs> I'll see what happens. I know there's other ways to do it. People use Q-tips and paintbrushes. What is going on up here? Oh, see that damage? That is hornworms. See how large they get? how much damage they do so quickly. I don't like picking these guys up. I think it's the fact that they squirm and it freaks me out a little bit, you know? Oh man, they're strong too. Woo! Okay, I got them. We're gonna go give them to the chickens because they love these little guys. Well, not little guys, big guys. Hey girls, you want, you want one of these? They just run. See that? They don't want it, the other chickens to take it from them. They're like, it's mine! Oh, oh. She's still working on trying to keep it from all the other chickens. <laughs> oh, I got a chicken out. And that's funny. Mario, I'm surprised you didn't grab her. Wow, look at that. They're starting to make their noise. You hear it? The turkeys? That's fun. I'm gonna grab this chicken real quick. I was able to get her back in. I was walking out from my garden yesterday and I got stung good on the bottom of my foot by a hornet. It was not pleasant at all. Nathan, he found a baby copperhead this morning in the grass, right on the path to the garden. Oh my. Don't go this way. No, don't get lost in them bushes, dude. There you go. They're pretty chill little snakes. You know, Alexa says she just, they just found him. They are, they're chill. He was trying to bite this little grabber. He's too, he's too small to get out. They're such pretty little they snakes. They are, I love copperheads. They are so pretty. Look how pretty his coloring is. Mm -hmm. Look on there's some yellow on his tail. You see there's a little bit of yellow. Baby copperheads have yellow tails. Yep. He's a baby? Yep. He's a little bitty baby. baby. I thought they'd be smaller. That means that we got a fresh hatch of copperheads hatched somewhere close by. Yep, keep your eyes out. I'm gonna mow the grass. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Oh, this borage, 
I've been calling it borage, but I looked it up, and I guess the correct pronunciation is borage. I need to remind myself that it, ry it rhymes with porridge. <laughs> porridge. So it's been getting kind of sick. Do you see that? So I've honestly ripped up a lot of these. Well, I say rip up, but I cut them at the base. I'll show you. So here, these ones were getting sick, so I cut them off, and I went ahead and planted some marigolds. Let's see if we can spot any more of these tomato hornworms. That one that I showed you, that's about as big as they get. Oh, look at this beautiful spider. I've been going to war with those Japanese beetles all week. See, they've done some damage here on this one. What I've been doing, I just take them. Pick them off. I haven't seen them. There's one. Pick them off and put them in a bucket. But right now, that bucket's um, got a copperhead in it, so I'm not going to be using that today. See, they've done quite a bit on this one. The one that I just picked off, that's the only one I've seen today. They've also been hitting my roses, but just going out there, honestly, a couple day, times a day and picking them off, putting them in the bucket, getting their, wing, their wings wet enough, and then I'll, I can give them to the chickens, and the chickens like them, so that works out. All right, y'all, before it starts getting too hot, I'm gonna go ahead and mow this grass, mow this clover. And later today, I've got something that I'm excited to show y'all. Y'all know I love antiques. And, well, I found something. We're gonna go pick it up today. And I think we'll bring y'all along. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and relocate this little guy. We're just about a mile from home. Yeah, copperheads are such beautiful snakes. It's really too bad that they're poisonous because I would keep them around. They, they're great rodent control and they're beautiful. This little spot's not far from our house, basically still in our neighborhood. It's just an abandoned field and an abandoned yeah. ruins. Can you call that a ruins? Yeah. I just find it to be an interesting place. There's a lake down that way. And then this rock structure, I figure, will give him plenty of places to hide. And there's no shortage of wildlife. Yeah. I think he's gonna be pretty well set up. Mm-hmm. What a cute little chimney. Look how they used natural granite slabs to make that the firebox. And the rest is just stones, and it looks like just a homemade mortar grout made from local sand and clay. Mm -hmm. No telling how old this chimney is. Probably as old as Georgia. There, there you go. go. Beautiful. Oh, isn't he? Well, whatever it is. If they weren't poisonous, I could see having one as a pet. Aren't they just beautiful snakes? And their personality, they're actually quite chill. They are. You have to really mess with them to get a bite. But, our little dog, Maro, she would definitely get a bite. You can't take a chance to, and especially if it's a baby. I mean, babies are more dangerous to get bit by. Oh yeah, every every threat they face is a life and death, so they will always use their poison. The big ones will sometimes the dry give you bite. a dry bite, but he, he will always use poison. We're gonna head off to go get that item that I'm gonna show y'all at the antique store. Oh, what, is that a... It's a surprise. This is a teaser? Yeah, I'm gonna tease him a little bit, just a little. <laughs> Y'all, we got something a little bit unexpected. We had to stop at Tractor Supply real quick, and well, Lily's birthday is coming up, and she really wanted to get a bunny, and they just happened to be selling them here, and not cute. So, make sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> bunny happens to be a Flemish giant, which is something we've always wanted. So I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about this. Do you have any ideas for a name, Lily? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Oh, I like that. That's cute. <laughs> We're here. Check it out. This is an old Dudley wood stove from what, the 1940s? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. 40s. Dudley, not deadly. That's what I said. I said Are Dudley. you sure? I it... said Dudley. <laughs> not deadly. <laughs> it's the deadly wood yeah, stove. It's the deadly. <laughs> Yeah, it's got all the parts and it works and it's it's sort of in keeping with the style that Jenna has in the kitchen. So. And I've been wanting a wood stove, although I'm still a ways away from using it. Yep. It's going to need to be cleaned up. And... It's getting a restoration. Yeah, now we just have to get this 500 pound thing home. 
Yes. And this one also has some insulation, didn't you say it has? Some yeah, it's got a, yeah. It's not just like It's a, real asbestos. <laughs> oh my God. So it doesn't, it's not just like the regular cast iron. No, the older cast it irons, out more heat. they crank out tons of heat. This one is a little closer to a modern appliance. I mean, the top still gets hot and we have, there are ways to address that so you're not cranking heat into the house while you're baking and stuff, but yeah. we'll get to that over time. This, this is the beginning of a project. Yes. All right, let's get this thing home. Wow, you got it. Kind of cool in the back. Good. Yeah. Because whatever deal, when you have it everywhere, you pile it with this. So how heavy was it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I figured I was out on myself. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna back up the trailer to this curb so they can just roll it right onto the trailer. Oh, there you go. Be okay <laughs> oh my goodness You're so cute we made it home it's all in one piece now we got to get it into the house i think what's going to happen here is nate's going to take it apart right yep piece by piece and he's got a sandblaster at work and he can take certain parts and clean them up real good yeah we'll give it a good restoration yeah some parts that i can improve the insulation and yep. stuff i mean oh you don't want to leave that asbestos in there probably not <laughs> I don't know. They say it works better than uh, fiberglass, though. Yeah. They said it worked really well. It just gives you cancer. Sounds dangerous. <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll get the whole trailer around to the back where it's easier for me to start disassembling this thing. Yeah, and it's going to be a project. It's going to be a while because we're going to have to take out pieces of the kitchen. Oh yeah, it's, to, it's it, this is a, this is getting a, a full restoration, and then of course the kitchen is going to need to get a full remodel. Yeah. Basically, I'm gonna have to rip out some cabinets and it's gonna be a project. But yeah, we're switching over to wood. Yeah, we are. We're like that. It's gonna be awesome. Well, let's figure this out. Yep. Billy, now we got an oven in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen, give him a tour. That's, What's that? This is the oven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, obviously it's smaller, which I'm okay with that. Yeah, you still put a good sized turkey in there? Yeah. Oh, it smells. It's got that antique smell, you know. It's like the original top plate had cracked, it's just cast iron. So they put a piece of steel, so I'll be looking for the cast iron or at least a, come on guys, at least a thicker piece of steel. Something that's gonna go. Something that's gonna match. This is a, a water reservoir. It wasn't for drinking water, it was just to have hot water on hand. And it acted as a, stores a bunch of heat and kind of evens it out, keeps the oven warm longer, that kind of thing. Hmm. Well, it's gonna definitely be a learning curve for me to figure out how to cook with wood, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. I hate my stove. I want something old fashioned. I don't like all this modern stuff. Well, you definitely <laughs> are getting away from modern with this one. Yes, I am. It's gonna be good. 
See that little brown ducky snake? Isn't he cute? Slithering along. Lots of bees. Hey little guy. I was able to mow and it looks and feels so much better and safer out here. I don't have to worry about stepping on a copperhead or something. This time with mowing, I didn't put the clippings out into the garden. I just let them go right on back down onto the clover. I like to do that every once in a while. I don't like taking it every time I mow. I wanted to show y'all something. I found something very interesting yesterday that I've never seen before in my garden, but I've heard a lot about. Check this out. That is a tomato hornworm. And those things on their back, well, it's a parasite. It comes from a, a type of wasp, a parasitic wasp. There's another name for it, something with a bee, but I can't think of it right now. The process is quite fascinating, but also extremely disturbing. <laughs> what they do is the female wasp lays eggs inside the tomato hornworm. When they hatch, they start to feed from the inside of the hornworm and then they work their way out and then they make these little cocoons. And that's what's going on right here. From my understanding, this is the cocoon phase. Those little cocoons will eventually hatch and the little flies will come out. And by the time that happens, this tomato hornworm will not make it. Basically, this tomato hornworm is going to get eaten alive from the inside out which is kind of a horrifying thought. But when these, when these little guys do hatch, I'll have more of these parasitic wasps in my garden help me, helping me out, which is a good thing. We want that. You see these little green pokey heads here? Those are carrot seeds. I've let quite a few of my carrots go, go to seed. And once this little guy dries out completely, I'll harvest the seeds. But I'm gonna have plenty of them, as you see. And this is just one section. It's gonna have kind of fun, huh? All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and finish picking off any pests that I see this morning. And I think we'll see you next time. Take care.